If you currently run an Airbnb or any type of rental for that matter, you know that customer support is your main priority. A bad review can dramatically affect your business. And nowadays you gotta take the extra step if you wanna get that five star review from your guests. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build a chatbot for free with VoiceFlow and then deploy it on a service like Telegram so you can send your guests to a link to a Telegram chatbot. It basically works 24 seven around the clock, giving you great customer service, answering any kind of bizarre questions your guests could have. Whether it be where to go out at 2 a.m. or what's the best spot in town for pizza, all the way to the Wi Fi password and the door codes. Also, a quick side note if you want me to help you build an Airbnb chatbot, you can book a free 15 minute call down in the description below and I can help you build whatever kind of chatbot or custom automated service you need. So, anyway, let's get started. So, I'm over on VoiceFlow, and VoiceFlow has been one of my favorite services for building chatbots recently. It's super easy, super intuitive to use. They have a great free plan. So, we'll come up to the top here and click on New Assistant, and I'll type in my my Airbnb chatbot and then I'll click on chat and then I'll also select on English. And then once we're in our voice load dashboard here, we're just going to shift click and drag and get everything out of here. We do not, we want to start with a blank chat bot. And what we'll do is I'll just click on this circle here and drag out and click again until we're brought with this menu here. If you're not familiar with voice flow, this is basically the steps we can take in our chat bot to show the user maybe an AI response, maybe some text, image, cards, if you want to listen for a choice, some logic. There's a lot of different things you can do here, but what I like to start with is just a talk text here. And for this, we'll make it really simple. I have some pre-made ideas already built out. We'll just start it off with a simple, hello, welcome to Lonely Lodges, townhouse. We welcome your stay. So something very simple to introduce the person um, when they're looking for support about your place. So we have our first text block here. And then I like to go with a second text block, just kind of introducing my name, Scott. How can I help you today? If what we're doing with this is basically prompting a user with a question. And it will be kind of weird on Telegram just because they don't have buttons to click. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how it works with buttons and all that really is is if we click on listen here and go to buttons and drag in some buttons here if we want some pre-made choices already set for our user we can enter them here and just to kind of explain how this works I have like a check in check out time button and then also a Wi-Fi password button and then also some door code button and then also if they have a another question that's completely different from what we're asking in here. So this will be kind of good because if they don't pick one of these options and they have a question, it'll go through the AI and then give them whatever response they want. So we can cover everything they want, but with this layout here, we're just giving them some options in the beginning if, if they want you know, something really quick and easy. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial too, when this goes into Telegram, we'll just be brought with this prompt here um, and then they can type in a question and it will respond just like it would any other prompt from I have a question. It'll make more sense later on, but just follow me for here. So I'll start off with the Wi-Fi password one as I feel like this can be the most simple. Um, if they click on Wi-Fi password, you want to drag it over to a talk text card here. And we're just gonna do a very simple, the Wi-Fi password is home one, two, three. So if they go on your chat bot, they just wanna know the Wi-Fi password, really simple. And then next we'll start off with door codes. So this is also really simple. You can kind of change it up for the most part. Uh, most Airbnbs don't really change their door codes. If they do, it's every couple weeks or so, but you can always change it depending on the guests or have your team come in and change it or whatever you wanna do. But for this example, I will just have a couple different text channels here. So just a very simple check-in time is 3 p.m. on the day of your arrival. Check-out time is 10 a.m. on the day of your departure. If you'd like to extend your time, we can accommodate for an extra $50 if available. So some very simple answers to our chatbot here. So for instance, if we wanted to run this, we can go here to the top here and test out our chatbot so far. So as soon as we log in, it'll say, welcome to the townhouse. Give us some options here. Um, let's say I want the Wi-Fi password and then we get the Wi-Fi password home one, two, three, and then we can move on with our day. We don't have anywhere to go with this yet, um, but we'll change that in a second. Nice. So, and then also what we'll do is, oh, this was for door codes. We want this to be for checkout time. Duh. Okay. That was a little misstep there. So let's, let's actually go to door codes. What I was thinking with this too, is if you wanted to add in like an API call to change it, um, just in case you wanted it to rotate and you had like some sort of way to fetch that number, you could have a, a API request here to always automatically change it. But if not, for this sake of this tutorial, we'll just go with the text here and just give some generic names for the door codes. Um, but yeah, just helping out your guests any way you can. So we have the, the check-in, check-out time, the Wi-Fi password, and the door codes. 
Um, these are all pretty pretty simple here. Like I said, the get request here, because we don't have anything set for right now, if you wanna add something in maybe to like fetch the, some of the door codes if they are con consistently changing. But for now, we'll just keep it on this and it will always show up as these numbers. So we have a little chatbot built out here with just some basic functionality. Um, to help out your guests. But now let's go into the fun part. So let's say your guest has a question. It's late at night. They wanna know maybe specifically like where's the best place to eat at 2 a.m. or what are some fun things they can do tomorrow? Just anything like that. It, it basically is a way for them to, to connect with you on your house a little bit more without having you to physically be there. The perks of this is obviously it saves a lot of time in managing your clients and also gives them a better experience. So for this, we're gonna use the AI feature in VoiceFlow to answer any questions they have about your home. So what we'll do is we'll come on over to knowledge base up here and it says we don't have any existing knowledge bases, but what I will also give you is, so for the sake of this tutorial, I basically have this Airbnb kind of Q&A um, that I made with ChatGPT and just some questions online. It's really, really general. It answers just a lot of the basic questions about your Airbnb. So things like the locks, things like early check-in, if there's maybe a late curfew hour, a laundry machine, consumables, um, any kind of random question that you could possibly think of a guest would ask about your property, especially property specific questions, you can add to this list. And this is what VoiceFlow will use in order to give your guests an accurate response on your property, right? So you can make this as long as you want. I'll have a link down in the description below to where you can get this sheet as well as the voice flow file for this chatbot that we're going to make. You can read it if you want, but I'll ask it some questions and kind of show you how it works. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna download it. I'll come back over and then I'll, I'll click on add data source, click on PDF, and then I'll just add in my Airbnb Q&A that I just had right here into our, into our knowledge base data sources. Perfect. So now that we have our knowledge base, we now need to pull from our knowledge base. So if the user has a question they wanna ask, first let's prompt them what their question is. So we'll say text and then we'll say, what would you like to know? Just a very simple introduction here and then we'll be listening for a capture. So now we're listening to what the user has to say. Um, and for this example, we're gonna need to make a variable to capture whatever they said. You can use last utterance if you want, but what I like to do is make a new variable and I'll call it question. This will just make it easier to keep track of the variable here. And then we'll come out here and then we'll make our new AI response AI box. And what we'll do is we'll click on it. Instead of AI model, we'll go to knowledge base and then for question to query the knowledge base, We'll use bracket question and click on our question variable we just got from our block here. So now what we can do is we'll just hit preview and we'll answer a question like, say, what can I do around here? Click on generate. You can see it says there are several activities and attractions to enjoy in Oak Park, including yada, 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 you get the idea. We'll try another one. We'll say, we'll say, can I bring my dog? The apartment is pet friendly for small, medium sized pets. Guests are responsible for any damage caused by their pets. Perfect. And if we kind of go over the sheet that I got from earlier, you can see it is exactly what I put in here, but it uses the question and then outputs the relevant response based on what they're asking for. Perfect. So you can have the exact answer for whatever your guest is looking for. So now what we want to do, if it does find a response, it'll say that response. We'll bring this out here, talk text and we'll just say hope that answers your question another text box so now we're responding to what the chat bot gave and then we're following up with if they have any other questions because we're obviously trying to help them in whatever they're trying to do and we'll use a listen button and we'll say yes I have a question or no I'm all set. Perfect. So now we can determine whether the user is all done with our conversation in this case if they are talk text thanks for choosing lonely lodge we hope you have a great stay and then we can just click on this again and then we'll click on the logic end here or eh, we'll just end it there so if they do have a question what we'll do is we'll just reroute them back into what would you like to know so now we're kind of getting that feedback loop of if they do have a question they can ask the question. If it finds the question, then it answers the question. 
and then it asks them if they have any more questions. If they do, they go back in the loop again. If they don't, then they're all set and we end the chat box. So what I like to do now is also we can fill in a couple gaps here. So because we have our hope that answers your question, we can also rig that up to these responses here. Because logically, if someone asks, they want the checkout time, then they get the checkout time, then you can respond with, hope that answers your question. And then if they have any other questions, they can ask them again here and go through the loop like they did before, or it just sets them out here. And we'll do that for all three of these ones. So now they're all hooked up in a fashion that makes sense and is logical for the guest. And obviously, like I mentioned before, you can get some sort of system going up here to where the code sets every time a new guest enters, something like that. Or if you wanna change the Wi-Fi password, same thing here. You can kind of customize it the way you want. I'll have it like this for the download for you guys, which you can find in the description below. Last case we want to do is in case we don't find the answer, we just want something in response to this. So we'll say text here, we'll just respond with, I'm sorry, but I don't know how to answer that. And then you can have another text box here and we'll say, please reach out to the Airbnb, the hosts on Airbnb. We'll be happy to assist you. We appreciate your understanding. And then we'll do one more box here. You can honestly have it feed right up into here. It doesn't really matter. It's honestly, it's fine too. Happy, we appreciate your understanding. Do you have any other questions? And then it goes into the loop again. So if they don't have any questions, it just goes ask them if they have more questions. If they don't, then it just cancels them out of here. And that's kind of it. That's like a very generic, easy, simple way just to kind of get some customer support going for your guest or your client. Let's run this and see what it does. So if we want to run test, hello, welcome to your stay. I'll say, I have a question. What would you like to know? Say, is there a local gym? Yes, there's a community fitness center located 10 minutes from the apartment. Hope that answers your question. Do you have any other questions? I do have a question actually. Say, are there quiet hours? Quiet hours are from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. on weekdays. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Hope that answers your question. Perfect. No, I'm all set. Thanks for choosing Lunge Lodge. Hope we have a great stay. And there you go. And you can deploy this exactly how it is. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'll show you how to deploy it on Telegram so you can send your guests a link and then they can use it there instead. Because what this mainly is for is using it on a website. So if you do have like a branded website for your Airbnb, you could send your guests over to your website and then have them use a chatbot on your website, which also is not a bad idea. But you kind of get the idea here. Once again, I'll have the link for this file down in the description below and so you can download this exact chatbot if you really want to use it on your website. So then if we get back out of our chatbot, click on publish, we'll just name it Airbnb chatbot and click on publish. It will give us a prompt here to embed the widget. And then we have the, just this source code here that we can input in our body tag on our website. So if you have like a header on like a WordPress website, you'd put this in there and then it would pop up like this on your website. And from here, we can even take it a step further and customize the appearance. So if you wanna change the logo, the image, the avatar, the color, things like that. Um, or even some of the text and on where things appear. This is where you would do all that. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I won't, I won't go too into it because you kind of get the idea. Also, if you're getting any value out of this video so far, make sure you hit a fat like on this video. It really, really does help me out. But anyway, let's keep going. So I know that most of you don't have a website for Airbnb. So what I want to show you is how you can deploy this on something like Telegram, super simply, super fast. And they can have a 24 seven customer support bot ready for them by standby at all times. So let me show you that. What we're going to do for this. We're going to use a cute little service called Glitch. And I have been a big fan of Glitch as of recently. And what it basically allows you to do is host servers on their servers for free. You can't like just deploy this chatbot to like a Telegram thing, like just click it and say send a Telegram. It's not how it works. You have to actually host your bot somewhere. So for that, we're going to be using Glitch. And also we're going to be using Telegram. So if you don't have Telegram installed, make sure you just go and install Telegram on Telegram's website. Really easy to set up just like any other program you would install. And we're going to be making a new bot and then we're going to be injecting Injecting our bot with glitch into our bot in Telegram. So to get started making our bot, we'll come over to Botfather. So I'll come in here and I'll just type in new bot and it will give us a new prompt here to basically set up our bots. And we'll click on slash create new bot here. So now we have our, all right, a new bot. What are we going to call it? Choose a name for our bot. I'll say lonely lodge good now let's choose a username for this so i'll say lonely lodge house underscore bot 
pretty simple, pretty easy. So now we have a API key and we're gonna be using this API key and glitch to connect our bot to our server. So keep this here as it is. Let's head on over to glitch and you're gonna to wanna to log in and then create a new project. And we're gonna to wanna to create a glitch hello node project. This is a very simple way to set up a server. You're not gonna to need to know how to code at all. Very beginner friendly. But once we're in our node server, we're gonna need a couple things. So we'll head on over to .env and then we'll click on add variable. So we'll type in bot underscore token and we'll get this API key from our Telegram bot that we just made. And then we'll paste in our API key right into here. So that's our first token that we need. Now we need one more token and we're gonna name this voice flow underscore API underscore key. And if we head back over to our Airbnb chatbot in voice flow, we're gonna click on this little circle with like lines coming out button called integration. And then we're gonna head on over to the dialogue API and then we're gonna copy this key. And then once we have our key copied, we'll come back over here and we'll just paste our key right in here. So now we have our bot token and our voice flow API key all set and ready to go. Couple more steps to get this up and running is we're gonna head on over to server.js and we're gonna want to change all of this so we can just delete everything here and you're gonna want to come on over to this doc link in the description below but this is basically just the documentation on how to get your webflow bot working on telegram you can watch the video and go through this if you want but basically what i've been doing is you can just copy this code here it's really all you need and then we'll come back over to server.js just paste that bad boy in there and yeah we're ready to go which auto saves which is fantastic so we need to do a couple more things we'll go over to package.js and we need three packages in order to get this to work we'll just click on add package up here and we're going to type in and we should get this axios 164 just click on that and that'll install the package we also need telegraph which is our which is basically another package to connect our bot up with node so we'll click on that and that'll add that package as well you'll know if you've done it right when you see the names come up here in the dependencies and then our last one we need is .env and we should be all good to go with those three. We should be solid. Now let's check out our bot. Open our chatbot, click on start. There we go. Welcome to Lily Lodge's townhouse. We welcome your stay. My name is Scott. How can I help you today? We'll say, what's the Wi-Fi password, Scott? Wi-Fi password is home123. Look at that. What are quiet hours and it gives the response for the quiet hours right so this is hosted all on glitch for free it is a little bit laggy if it's not being used constantly i think it has like a five minute downtime timer but if you're not using it for more than like a couple hours and someone does use it it will take like a couple seconds to get working but hey it's better than nothing and if you want to give good customer service and you're not available this is better than nothing right yeah this will just sit on here for as long as you have an account you can you know delete out of this page and just let it sit here um, and you have your chatbot just ready to help people. It doesn't completely translate all the buttons and all that from the actual chatbot here directly into, I haven't figured out how to get to work like exactly like that, but um, it's better than nothing. And it makes it super easy to set up a bot um, and just to get it working with your guests and just send them over the link that you got from here. Just the TM, the TME Lonely Lodge bot Lonely Lodge House underscore bot. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to make an AI chat bot for your Airbnb or rental business. Once again, I'll have the links to everything down in the description below, as well as where you can download the files for both the voice flow file and also the Q&A sheet that I used in this video for your knowledge base. You can go through there, change out all the questions and make it your own and then use it for your own business. Also, if you want me to help you create a chat bot, make sure to book a time down below with me and we can talk about building you a custom AI chat bot for your Airbnb or rental business business. I'd love to work with you. So make sure you check out that link down below. And that's really all from me. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like down below. It really, really does help out my channel. Also subscribe, turn notifications on so you get alerted every time I make a new AI productivity business tip video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.